Did you know that your body is more efficient at generating power than the core of the sun? Don't believe me? Let's crunch the numbers. The average 80 kilogram person consumes 2,500 kilocalories per day, which comes to 120 watts. Divide that by 80, and you have a power to weight ratio of 1.5 watts per kilogram. Now, let's look at the sun. Its total power output is 3.8 times 10 to 26 watts, and its mass is 3.955 times 10 to 30 kilograms. 10% of the mass is in the core, so the power to weight ratio of the core is roughly 1 milliwatt per kilogram, 1 hundredth of your body tissues. But how could that be if your body is 37 degrees while the core of the sun is millions of degrees? Well, say you have a cube of material with a weak power source inside. The object will heat up at a slow rate, but if there is nowhere for the heat to go, eventually it will reach thousands and millions of degrees. Now, there is only one way for heat to be transferred in the vacuum of space, as light energy. When an object is heated, it will glow brighter, i.e. release more energy. How much energy is a function of the temperature to the power of 4? When an object in a vacuum is heated by an internal power source, it will get hotter, causing it to glow brighter until the energy is emitted as light at the same rate that it's generated, at which point an equilibrium will be reached. If you recall from physics class, the square cube law states that as the size of an object is increased without changing its shape, the surface area to volume ratio will decrease, which in turn makes it hotter to dissipate heat. The sun's total surface area is 61 times 10 to the 18th square meters, so each square meter will have 65 million tons of core material beneath it. So, while each metric ton of material will only produce two-thirds of the energy a kilogram of human flesh would, it adds up quickly across all the metric tons beneath that one square meter. And since all that energy has to be released from said square meter as light, the combined energy heats it up to 5,772 degrees Kelvin. This causes it to release 63 megajoules of energy per second. However, it should be noted that not all stars quote-unquote burn their fusion fuel at the same rate. Increasing the mass of a star will not only increase its luminosity, but since the pressures in the core will be much higher, each kilogram will host a higher rate of fusion. So the luminosity will increase faster than the mass will. How much faster? Well, usually it'll be the mass to a power greater than one. But since larger stars can fuse heavier elements, the exact parameters change across stellar sizes. But how large would a star have to be for the core to be more efficient at producing energy than our own body tissues? First things first, it'll have to have a luminosity to mass ratio 1500 times greater than our own sun. So for each of these equations, we have to divide it by the mass relative to our own sun, lowering each power by one. Now, looking at the equation for the mass range which includes our own sun, two to the power of three is eight. So the answer to this question isn't in this range. Hence, we have to look at stars between 2 and 55 times the mass of our own sun. If we crunch the numbers, the star would have to be 8.7 times as big as our sun for the core to be as efficient as we are at producing energy. To put that in perspective, only about 1 in 250,000 stars are this large or larger. Stars this size are the ones that go supernova and leave neutron stars behind. And all of this makes one feel a little pessimistic about a future where the world's power demands are met by nuclear fusion. You often hear that it takes the astronomically high temperatures and pressures inside the core of a star to initiate thermonuclear reactions. What they don't tell you is that even they suck at it. Hey everyone. I just thought I'd do this video as a fun little mind-bending exercise to elucidate how our intuition can be a bit misleading at times and how it can break down when dealing with very large or very small scale things.